Well, good morning, greetings, greetings, greetings. Good to see you all. Positive energy all the time. What's going on, Twin Pyramid? Good to see you. Will of the Most High, Latanya, Lady Linus, B. Dolo, M. West, Michael Lee, Chris H., More Power, I'm Rod's in the building. The Prince of Paraphernalia is here. Javel is here. It's good to see you. Hey, Mae West. We had a great time. The dinner was great. I enjoyed your company. Can't wait to come to New York and hang out with you, right? You're such a sweetheart. My main man, Gosham, is here. Christopher is here. Islam all day, brother. You know what it is. Javel is here. This is a strange conversation. Okay, I'm going to let some people get over here. YouTube doesn't send notifications out for about 15 or 20 minutes, so we always like to take a 30-minute uh, to just chill before everybody get over here. What's going on? Happy birthday to my sweetheart out there. Happy birthday, baby. <sighs> so what's going on? I hope you all having a great day. This is a this is a crazy conversation. I got a lot to talk about. It's probably gonna be really I'm probably gonna really be over here a lot today. Um whew, I got a lot to talk about. I think I might talk about uh, vulnerable vulnerability of uh, us in America. You know, somebody shot up the grid on the east coast. All those people lights is out. And I told y'all, the grids are not protected. Uh, United States government is going to have to send military to the grids. They're going to have to be military there. I mean, we got plenty of soldiers. Why isn't there military at the grid? So we'll probably talk about that. What else is going on? A lot is going on. Uh, I haven't been talking about the takeoff situation uh, that's a little too policey for me. I've been talking about that. The uh, the situation with Deion Sanders. I talked about that. I wish him the most best luck. Uh, it's a shame when we criticize somebody for making their own personal business decision what's best for them when it comes to making money and a job. I think social media puts expectations on other people that they don't put on themselves. 
Nobody tells you where to work. Nobody tells you where to shop. Nobody tells you what stores to go to. Nobody tells you what to support. So for you to, you know, for people to get on here and criticize him for, you know, going wherever he wants to go to work, I think that's foul. In every sense of the word, that's 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 crazy. Who are you supposed to be? You know, you're kind of crazy when you think you can tell somebody where they should have worked because it makes you happy. Because you're happy. Is that what the heck? With that fake black stuff. Uh, us with that. Us with that black stuff. You know. It's too bad we don't act as black as we type and post. Another story for another day. Unbelievable. If we was that black, we wouldn't have any Greek fraternities and sororities. Come on. Stop. Please. So that's what's going on. It's a bunch going on. From what I understand, Slim, some people saying the stuff didn't get stolen, that the staff moved it, and then it was returned to them. I don't know. You mean the heat got on and they brought it back? What staff moved it? I mean, so you move my things and you don't leave a note that we moved your things. You just move my things that... Uh, yeah, you know. The fact that you moved his things and he didn't know you moved them and he went out there and said it was stolen and it wasn't stolen, that's still very unprofessional. That's, come on. Why are you touching my stuff anyway? No, uh, no. Uh. But much respect to to them. You know, I'm not into the historical black college things because it's not they're not historically black like that. So I I don't like the HBCUs. If you got Greek fraternities at HBCU, you bootleg, you're fake. Get some comedic Egyptian fraternities. Get some South Africans, West Africa, East Africa, even native black Native American. Something, but Greek? No, you can't be black and Greek. Get the hell out of here! Come on, I'm not sending my children to no historically black college and university to pledge to be Greeks. Fucking nonsense! And that's what we got right now. We got a bunch of fake blacks. You know, anybody could be black. You don't have to be about nothing. You know, you don't have to be about anything. You just say you're black. Right? Unbelievable. One other story. You know. I remember when I was college age and I was up at the college going to school and you know, don't even approach me with that. You know what I'm saying? First off, I'm not kissing nobody's ass to get in no fraternity. So all of that pledging and all that shine your shoes and I got to do all this, you say, I ain't doing all that anyway. You ain't finna punk me. You know what I mean? You're not finna punk me to join no, man, you better get out of the some of my friends, you know, I grew up with, they joined. They made them do all kind of stuff, laying bathtubs full of stuff, do all kind of stuff. You know? Uh, yeah, they could have a Coptic Ethiopian. You know, it could be Coptic Ethiopian. It could be Coptic Egyptian, Comedic. But just the pledging, you know what I mean? You trying to make me do something and bow down to you and all that? No, bro, listen. I'm not I'm not doing no hazing, bro. So that was never my style. You know, I you know, I would never be gang affiliated or none of that if I gotta be punk, you know what I mean? 
You see what I'm saying? Then I'm a lion. I ain't finna be no dog. I don't be no Q dog, right? No queer dog. Like, nah, nah. I don't like the way that sound. I don't like the way none of them sound. I'm not no Kappa. I don't like the way that sound. I'm not no Delta or whatever. I don't like the way they sound, so you'd have to make up a whole new group for me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't messing with that. My relationship to the fraternities was shooting down to Southern Illinois when the Kappas have their big festivities to holler at the Shawties. <laughs> and so I remember we go for the Kappas had the biggest uh, event. We just going down there to, to meet girls. We don't care nothing about Kappa after Bappa. You know what I'm saying? We down there for the P, not the K. Oh my soul. You know what I'm saying? Shorty not finna be no cap if I get with her. She finna be something else, player. So that's what we used to go to Southern for down there just to grab the girls. We ain't trying to hit none of that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We intimidate the frat boys, you know. Hey, stay in your place. You better go dance with your little stick, boy. You know? Like that, you know? You better go dance, bro. You feel me? So, yeah, it was just somewhere we went to try to holler at the girls. You know, college age, you know. But I'm not going to join. I ain't no joiner, you know. I can't be joining stuff, you know. It got to be honorary, you know, for me. I ain't no follower like that. Uh -huh. I used to get in arguments with some of the brothers in the gangs and stuff because I ain't going to do just whatever chief say. You know what I mean? I respect it got to be leadership, and I respect leadership. But if chief tell me to jump out the window, I ain't going. How do I feel about Masons? I don't know. I ain't never. I always been. I've been black conscious since I was a shorty. So I ain't never cared about all that weirdo stuff. If it wasn't pro-black. I ain't, I ain't trying to join all that weirdo stuff. You black or you not? And all that other stuff, what that got to do with anything? You know what I'm saying? I was pro-black since I was a shorty. I've been doing this. You know, I started really getting heavy into this in the late 70s, you know, and I've been pro-black really all my life. I'm a black power baby, but I really started practicing it myself. But I was born around it. I've been... Afro fist up, Afro pick, black power. Since I was a shorty, since I was in third, fourth, fifth grade, I've been black power. Then I started practicing it, you know, 78, 79. When I get out of high school, I get out of high school in 76. I'm pro black then. I just didn't know it. But I'm up at school doing Gil Scott Heron poetry uh, in English when I'm a junior. I'm a junior. I'm doing Gil Scott Heron in the English class. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even know I was a revolutionary. I found out I was a revolutionary in like 79, but I've been there. So as far as me joining all that weirdo stuff, but really ain't standing on nothing now. I ain't with none of that. I ain't with that. I don't see what the Masons doing nothing for black people like that. What they doing? Making jars? <laughs> I mean, what the Masons do? Make jars? I don't got time for no nonsense. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it real. I might as well join the church. You know what I'm saying? I just don't got time. If that's what you want to do, cool. 
You know, if you want to join some stuff, but I mean, what is it doing though? You know what I'm saying? Like all our organizations don't be doing nothing. The gangs don't be doing nothing. All our groups don't be doing nothing. Fraternity sororities don't be doing nothing. Uh, the NAACP, the Urban League, all these, the churches do a little stuff, but not unified like a Baptist church would do something or a Methodist church would do something, but the whole Baptist churches don't do nothing as Baptists, as Methodists, they ain't doing shit. So our community wouldn't be like this. They ain't doing nothing. They just sitting there and we gonna fold under, listen, if all of these organizations was all that, why we finna be under the mark of the beast? Where the cap is at? Where the Q dogs at? Where's all these? Where's the HBCUs? Where's all these, you know, comedic brothers and Pan Africans and where they at? Why are we under the thumb of oppression? Where's RBG at? Where's all this at? Oppression is constantly on our neck. They constantly putting a thumb on our neck. Uh, you, ain't nobody doing nothing. We finna go into a straight up casual society. Where's all these groups at? They gonna go casuals with the beast. They riding with the beast. I'm trying to tell you. They all riding with the beast. The church ain't saying nothing. The fraternities and sororities not standing up saying nothing. Nobody. Nobody's speaking on our behalf. Nobody spoke up for us when they was trying to force us to get vaccinated and all that. Nobody said nothing. Nobody has been standing up for black people. So you got all these organizations. What you got them for? They ain't worth a nickel. You got all these rosters. They're not worth a quarter. I wouldn't give you 30 cents for every roster around. What is roster doing for this community, for Jamaica, for anywhere? Nothing. What is Islam doing for black people? Nothing. The Nation of Islam is not doing nothing for black people in America like that. They ain't only doing for the Nation of Islam. Nation of Gods and Earth not doing nothing. The Moors not doing nothing. The Christian Blacks not doing nothing. The gangs not doing nothing. The fraternity and sororities not doing nothing. There's nothing being done for us as a people. Show me. Show me where it's at. Tell me when you go home and you come to work, it ain't just you and your wife or you surviving. Do you feel like you got any aid and assistance out here? I don't. I'm on my own. What assistance do I got out here? None. I have no aid, no assistance out here, no kind of way. You on your own. You don't pay your rent or whatever. You get evicted, and none of those groups come to your aid. They're, they're all that talk where you join the fraternity sorority and they help you get jobs and all that. I know people in that. They say it's a damn lie. They don't help you like that. You have It's like a friend thing. If you got a friend and you in some sorority and she your friend and you stay in contact with her, she'll plug you with something. But the sorority not just reaching out for you like that where you black and you could go to your fraternity and sorority and get no job. That's all. No, that's a lie. Straight up. The gangs ain't doing nothing. Your own gang members are backdoor you out here. They only show up for violence, but shoot, when the police come, somebody going to snitch. So what good is they? They'll show up, though. But everybody in the gang don't even like you. You in the gang, them dudes don't be liking you. They be having dude like dude and dude like this, dude like that. Like, I know some gang members that ride with me, but the whole gang, 
I couldn't trust them further than I could see them. On my soul, I couldn't trust them. I had to call the same two or three dudes. They're going to ride. But the rest of them, you know, when you go around your man's, your boy, and he around these other dudes, these other dudes don't be liking you like that. Some of them don't even like your man's. Oh, my soul. I don't know about family back doing you. I don't know. <clears throat> I know friends will, but I ain't never heard of no family get you killed. I ain't never heard of that. I ain't heard of that before. <clears throat> That's a new one. I ain't really heard of no brother or no sister back door and they brother or they sister. I ain't heard of that one yet. Usually family just get into petty arguments. We ain't really heard about family setting you up to get killed or nothing like that. Ain't heard of that one yet. <clears throat> but friends, yeah, because a friend, a friend is just a word. A friend ain't a friend unless they're a friend. So, you know, just because somebody calls himself a friend don't really mean they're a friend. So, you know, the word friend is tricky because the word friend, you know, you can't verify if this is a friend or not. And then even if it's somebody associate, you can entrust a certain associates only with certain things. Shout out to Andrew for the $100 in the super chat. Y'all hit that super chat, hit the cash out. You can only trust a friend for certain things, you know what I mean? So you have to know who you can trust with what, who you can trust and who you can't trust. You know what I'm saying? Like that. You know? For me, you know, <clears throat> the only person I can really trust is a woman that loved me like that, you know, or my sister, you know, or my cousin. You know, my mother and father, but they passed away. So my sister, I could trust her a billion percent. My cousin, I could trust him a billion percent. And then whatever woman I'm dealing with, I could trust them a billion percent while the relationship is good. If the relationship get funny, she start complaining a lot. I can't trust her like that. But if she cool and she crazy in love, I can trust her. You know, you can trust her with your life. You know what I'm saying? But a friend, you know, a friend got to be tested. So, you know, I try to teach my children that a friend's not a friend until they come through in the worst times, until it's two in the morning, your car won't start because it's cold outside and you call them and they wake up and get in their car at two in the morning, come give you a jump. That's, you know, you a, a friend has to be tested to be authentically a friend. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So my friend like Ronald Gresham, like I could call Ronald right now I could be like, man, my car broke down, man. I need to go do this and that. And he's going to tell me the honest God truth. And if he don't come, it's because he can't. He's going to be like, man, I got to go to work, man. I got to be at the school. But I could come soon as I leave the school like that. And he's going to come. But if he ain't doing nothing, he's going to stop everything and come get me. I'm going to do it the same way. If Ron called me right now, I'll end this live right now and go get him. You know, so if Ryan called me right now in this life, I'll go get him. And so you can't, you know, I try to teach my children, you know, everybody else is an associate. You know, associate, a friend is when they really come through. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you could tell they a friend, you know. Somebody like Andrew, I would consider Andrew a friend because Andrew is the type of person to come through. In the clutch, he like a, he one of them kind of dudes. He be loyal, you know what I'm saying? 
that's the kind of people you got to have as a friend. But you can't be funny with him because then he ain't going to want to mess with you. You got to be straight up. You can't be no funny style with him. And he looking out for you and you acting all funny. Drew ain't going to want to mess with you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's the content of a person's character, and that's how you can tell, you know what I'm saying? So I'll do anything for Drew because he, he that kind of dude. Everybody ain't built like that. So they can't be a good friend if they ain't built like that. It takes a certain amount of morals and stuff to even be able to do any of that. But today we're talking about something strange, man. We're talking about this thing called 15-minute cities. Real talk. Y'all, they got some stuff. They got some stuff called 15-minute cities. This is the craziest stuff you ever heard. I'm telling you, y'all, they tripping. You know, you need to send this video to everybody because this is where we headed. It's coming to a place near you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's called 15-minute cities. It's unbelievable. I'm telling you, this is some of the craziest stuff you ever heard in your life. It's called 15-minute cities where they want to have it where they want to, like, lock you down. And everything is within that 15 minutes. You can walk or ride a bike. And basically, you can't leave that area unless you get a permission. Hey, man. This is crazy. This is crazy for real. It's called 15 Minute Cities. And they real serious about it. They doing models of it right now. I'm telling you, y'all, they not playing. It's really, it's really the mark of the beast type stuff for real. Like, for real, like, for real, for real. Like, no joke. Like, no joke. Like, for real. Listen, this is in Forbes, right? The 15-minute city, what they are and how to build them. Check this out. On first glance, the concept is very simple to create neighborhoods and cities where a person can meet a host of their basic needs via a short walk or bike ride. Larger cities also tend to include public transit in the mix. Exactly what defines short varies from place to place. Copenhagen, for example, adopted a five minutes to everything model back in 2016. A maximum five minute walk to all amenities and public transport. For Melbourne, the goal was a 10 minute threshold or more specifically a 20 minute return trip to all amenities. Other cities, including Glasgow, Portland and Hamilton, New Zealand, aim for 20 minutes. And while the specific time period differs, the central tenant enhancing the accessibility of neighborhoods through design and active transit remains the same. The concept, which is increasingly being generalized to the X minute city is revolutionizing the way we think about our urban homes. The planning model was formally proposed by a French Colombian scientist and Sorbonne professor Carlos Moreno in 2016. Elements of it have been around since at least the 1960s. Marino credits Jane Jacobs as the major source of inspiration. 
and it shares many of the same principles as walkable mixed use urban design. But Marino's 15 minute framing of it grabbed public attention. In French, it's called La Ville du Court de Hero. And it's in France that it was first put into practice thanks to the support of Anne Hadid, Hadidlo, Hidalgo, the mayor of Paris. Marino's motivation for developing the model was to disrupt the traditional car-focused approach that dominates urban design thinking, thinking and replace it with the focus of hyper-proximity. They want to take your car away from you. No car. No car. You got to ride a bike or walk or take public transportation. You feel me? Not only, he argued, would this result in huge emissions reduction. They trying to say they trying to save the environment, right? It would also lead to more sustainable, human-centric urban environments. There's a growing body of evidence that suggests such neighborhoods promote everything from social cohesion to public health. His was a vision that Hidalgo bought into wholeheartedly. She made it a cornerstone of her successful 2020 re-election campaign, saying that my project is about proximity, participation, collaboration, and ecology. In Paris, we all feel we have no time. We're always rushing to one place or another, always trying to gain time. That is why I'm convinced we need to transform the city so Parisians can learn, do sports, have health care, shop within 15 minutes of their home. In some ways, this is a natural progression for his Dalgo. Since her election in 2014, prioritizing active transit has been the key focus. She has created hundreds of kilometers of bicycle lanes. Right throughout the city, she closed off scenic stretches of the Seine Riverbank to cars by one estimate removing 73,000 car trips from the area. And two of the city's plaza, Place de la Republica and Place de la Bastille, were completely redesigned to prioritize pedestrians and cyclists. Here in Chicago, they went and built all these bike lanes out of nowhere, messed the streets up, took a lot of space on the streets for bikes, and made it very difficult to drive in certain areas because you got less room because of the bike lane. Hey, man, let me tell you. All those efforts seem to be paying off. According to the UN, Paris managed to cut its carbon emissions by 20%, right? So on and so on. They're constantly pushing it on here, okay? Right? Real talk. But check this out. This is an article in spite. Most people will know Oxford as Britain's oldest seat of learning. But according to the Sunday Times, it is better known to its residents for its gridlock traffic. In past decades, town planners might have looked at this problem of high level of congestion and drawn up plans for new and wider roads. But today, planners are gripped by an anti-car ideology. Their focus is less on helping people get around than reducing our use of cars by any means necessary. To this end, right, Oxfordshire County Council, which is run by Labor, the Liberal Democrats, and the Green Party, wants to divide the city of Oxford into six 
15 minute districts. And these districts, it is said, most household essentials will be accessible by a quarter of an hour walk or bike ride. And so residents will have no need for cars. On the surface, these 15 minute neighborhoods might sound pleasant and convenient, but there is a, a cohesive edge. The council plans to cut car use and traffic congestion by placing strict rules on car journeys. Under the new proposal, if any of Oxford's 1,000 150,000 residents drives outside a designated district more than 100 days a year, he or she will be fined 70 francs, I guess that is. Well, you mean it won't work. Shh, candy, you're going to do whatever they tell you to do. Okay? You believe that if you want. You're already doing what they tell you to do. They made people stand six feet between each other. They made people wear masks. They made people get vaccinated. So tell that to somebody else. They, you're doing what they tell you to do, right? So if you, if you go outside your district more than 100 days, they find you, right? Do not leave your allotted zone at least most of the time. That is the policy, or it could, or it could soon be after Oxfordshire County Council decides on the matter on the 29th of November. Although there is a public consultation that is still ongoing, the council is likely to overrule any objections for residents. Labor. Councilor Duncan Enright, cabinet member for travel and development strategies, has already declared that the policy is going to happen definitely. Right? Right? And I'm going to tell you like this. They do it in a small place like this. Once they get it in a small place like that, then they spread it all over the world. Anybody got their eyes open? No. America's all down for it, okay? Run by Labor Administration, Oxford City Council takes a similar line. Its local plan 2040 places a strong emphasis upon the concept of the 15-minute city. Foremost in its vision and strategy, it's not residents, but the environment. Oxford, we learn, is a human-scale city has the potential to enable residents to live in a healthy and sustainable way, for example, because of the possibility of traveling by active active modes, such as by biking on foot, which is why it's such a sustainable location for development, including jobs and housing. The environment will be central to everything we do. Clearly, Oxford City Council sees the 15-minute district concept as the key to cities flourishing, not just lowering emissions of CO2 and particulars. And I'm going to tell you something. Yes, they can do it, because guess where you're going to work from? You're going to work from home, man. They already did this over the last two years. They already tried to experiment. They got they had everybody working at home. It's, it's millions of people now working remote. People not going to no offices no more. In Chicago, we have two downtowns. We have a downtown south of the river, and we have River North. And River North is where the shopping and all that's at in the hotels, and that's popping. River South is hurting. That's where all the jobs is at. And in River South, the people that got restaurants and stuff say they losing money because a lot of people never came back to the office. The office is closed. A lot of these big companies are not paying for office space anymore. They are mailing computers to their employees and you work from home. Most of my friends work from home. 
Some of them work from home three days a week. They only go in the office twice. Some of them don't never go in the office. Oh, my soul. Right? The concept of 15 Many Cities was born with C40, chaired today by London Mayor Sadiq Khan. C40 calls for itself a network of mayors of nearly 100 world-leading cities collaborating to deliver urgent action needed right now to confront the climate crisis. Central to the birth of the project was another former London mayor, Ken Livingston. Livingston was often explicit in his anti-car ideology in 1999, shortly before becoming mayor. He remarked, I hate cars. If I ever get any power again, I ban them. <clears throat> Look. They are going to make it where the less you go outside your zone, the higher your credit score will be. Listen, y'all ain't listening. The higher your credit score will be if you sit down and don't move. Facts. Watch this. Oxfordshire Council to try a climate lockdown starting 2024. Oxford County Council passed climate lockdown trial to begin in 2024. Oxfordshire County Council yesterday approved plans to lock residents into one of six zones to save the planet from global warming. The latest stage in the 15-minute city agenda has placed electronic gates on key roads in and out of the city confining residents to their own neighborhoods. Under the new scheme, if residents want to leave their zone, they will need permission from the council who gets to decide who's worthy of freedom and who isn't. Under the new scheme, residents will be allowed to leave their zone a maximum of 100 days per year. But in order to even gain this, every resident will have to register their car details with the council, who will then track their movements via smart cameras around the city, man. Listen, I don't think I don't think y'all hear me. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if y'all hear what I'm trying to tell you. I don't know if y'all hear me. I don't know. Listen. Oxfordshire County Council, which is run by Labor, Liberation, and the Green Party, secretly decided to divide the city up of Oxford into six 15-minute districts in 2021, soon after they were elected in the office. None of the councilors declared their intention of imprisoning local residents in their manifestos, of course, preferring to make vague claims about how they would improve the environment instead. Every residence would be required to register their car with the county council, who would then monitor how many times they leave the district via number plate recognition cameras. And don't think you can beat the system if you're a two-car household. Those two cars will be counted as one meaning you will have to divide up the journey between yourself, two cars, 50 journeys each, three cars, 33 journeys each, and so on. Listen, they're going to put dividers, man. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think people understand what I'm telling you. They push it outside of the U.S. first. And once they get it going, it's spread all to Asia, all over. It'll be in the United States before you know it. 
this is all happening at the same time when Biden just signed for digital currency. Money finna be gone. You're gonna be on digital currency. They're finna take dollars. You're not gonna have any dollars. You're not gonna have any paper. You're not going to have a driver's license. You're not going to have a birth certificate. You're not going to have an insurance card. All that's going to be digital. And they're using the environment to do it. You know what else they're using to do it? You ain't going to believe this. Do you know what they're using to take away our rights? Eating meat. They want to stop you from eating meat. They're going to shut down your farms. You're not going to be allowed to eat meat. Listen, I don't, I don't think y'all understand. They take righteous stuff. Like we need to take better care of the environment. We need to eat better. They're taking righteous stuff and they're using it in a wicked way. They're going to push no meat, right? They're not going to push it like how we pushing it for your health to eat better, eat more fruits and vegetables. They're going to push it to eat this meat they making, right? They're going to push laboratory meat. They own some Soil and Green. Who's seen Soil and Green movie? I told people this. I've been telling people for years. That after so many years, I'm going to stop eating plant-based meats because vegetarianism, one of the main things was used first for meat was soy. Soy was the first meat replacement for vegetarians back in the 80s. And what's the name of the movie? Soy Lynn Green, where they was feeding them humans. They kind of find out that this fake meat was really them recycling the dead bodies because they didn't have nowhere to keep burying people. They was running out of burial sites. Listen, here in Chicago, they ran out of burial sites. I don't know who remember this. Was this about seven years, eight years ago when they went to all of these morgues and stuff and they went to these uh, funeral homes and they had dead bodies stacked up? where you thought they had buried your loved one and they didn't, they found dead bodies all over Chicago, man, that wasn't buried. They don't got nowhere to bury you. Listen, they ain't got nowhere to bury you. So they just passed the law right now, right? Where they could turn dead bodies into sludge and use it for fertilizer. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Look, on my soul. On my soul. Y'all know about that? Listen, man. California has legalized human compost. Listen, California has drawn a growing number of states that allow residents to compost their bodies after death. A new law signed by Governor Gavin Newsom on Sunday directs California officials to develop regulations for the practice known as natural organic reduction by 2027. Washington became the first state in the nation to legalize human composting in 2019, followed by Colorado and Oregon in 2021. Vermont legalized the practice in June 2022. Human composting typically involves putting a body into a steel vessel, then covering it with organic materials like straw, wood chips, and alfalfa. Microbes break down. 
the corpse and the plant matter, transform the various components into nutrient-rich soil in roughly 30 days. Staff is at the special human compost funeral homes, then remove the compost from the vessel and allow it to cure two to six weeks. Family members can then use the human compost like any other type of compost, such as by mixing it in the flower beds, or they can donate it and spread it in conservation areas. Listen. I don't think y'all hear me. What these people is really on. I don't think you understand. It's another article. The surprising sickness of the 15-minute cities. Right? Fifteen many cities are not just a collective of autonomous medieval villages living in a constant state of crisis. The fractal nature of cities is what makes them dynamic places as a collective of connected neighborhoods with their own cultural history that evolve over time and contribute to the identity of a larger system such as Harlem Renaissance or the Latin jazz or hip-hop cultures of the Bronx. Right? 15 minute cities is the predominant urban trend of the 20th century that continues into the current one, namely rapid urbanization, both dystopian and utopian. An estimate 1 billion urban poor, one in every eight people on the planet live in informal settlements. Then there is the dystopian ghost towns of China where 130 million properties are vacant, which could house about 340 million people, surpassing the current U.S. population. Between dystopia, bad place, and utopia, no place, the eutopia, a town planning term coined in the 19th century Scottish uh, situation, it comes from the Greek origin of EU, meaning good, and topos, meaning place, comprising of folk work, right? So what's new about the 15 minute cities? As a concept, not much, which is why I initially dismissed it as a fad. But as the old wine, new bottle framing went, blah, blah, blah. There is no such thing as a new idea. Okay, hold on. They babbling. So they ain't, they ain't, they babbling. I ain't gonna read all that. Basically though, you ain't finna have no rights, okay? You ain't you 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 ain't finna have no rights. You finna live where they tell you to live, okay? And you're gonna be locked into your city, like you say. That's what they want to do. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen. Let me tell you something. It's gonna happen. It don't mean it's gonna work. Be dolo. They shutting these people down. There ain't no doubt about that. Ain't nothing be dolo show any resistance to anything. The last two years show you people going to bow down. Ain't nobody stood up, bro. They finna do that. It ain't going to necessarily work, but they going to set it in the law. You're going to have to resist. It ain't going to be no thing where it's going to be a thing where they're going to do it and you're going to have to fight against it. But it ain't no thing where you're just going to sit back and they're not going to take you over. The people be dolo ain't, ain't on nothing. The people is passive. You can do anything to these people. You see what I'm saying, be dolo? You can do anything to these people. These people, they believe whatever the government take them. They got a young generation that can't wait to get the microchip. 
You got a young generation that get on, oh man, you don't know what you're talking about. Money ain't no good. Money out of here. We like crypto. We like digital currency. Money done. Nobody want money. Oh man, nobody want money. They suckers ready for the slaughter. When they take money away next year, these shorties going to G for that. Biden already signed already signed it. American digital currency is done, is a done deal. America's developing digital currency. Most experts say it's going to come out before the election, that it's going to come out next year or early 2024. That's what experts are saying. They call it Biden bucks. It's already done. It's already done. It's already it's already it's already passed. There's already digital currency. Money is done. Any day they're gonna tell you your money gotta be turned in or it's just gonna be paper. Watch this. Central bank digital currency, CBDC, while the Federal Reserve has made no decision on whether to pursue and implement a central bank digital currency or CBDC, we have been exploring the potential benefits and risk of CBDC. Hold on. White House releases first ever comprehensive framework for responsible development of digital assets. This happened September. Hold on. U.S. banks launch a digital dollar blockchain pilot. This happened November 16th. It ain't even been a month. They lost the they launched the banks launched the pilot for digital money. It's already it's 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 up. I'm telling you. It's up. You better believe it. He said, North Carolina just had a major power outage. I've been told him that, Chris, that they were going to shoot up the grids. I'm going to talk about that tonight, Chris. N Chris, none of the grids is protected. None of them. N the, the grids that control thousands and thousands, there's no security there, just a little fence. They they shot one down on the north on the west northwest I think of America. They messed one up and they finally put security. They got no security on the grids. Anybody can go with a phone and shoot up the grid, and thousands of people's lights is out. They just did it over there on the east coast. Anybody could just go over there and turn all our lights out. They can attack all the grids on the same day and the whole America won't have no lights for months. Now they worried about them people on the Northeast freezing. They ain't got no heat. How they going to stay warm? They won't have power till next weekend and it's freezing. 
How many homes are going to burn down? How many people are going to try to have fires in there? How many people are going to die of fires? It's up, okay? No resistance. They're talking about taking your guns. This is why every time it's a mass shooting, they want to take your guns. Yeah, the power grids. The power grids, the power grids have no, no protection, nothing. The power grids have no protection, none. None, no security, it's just a fence. It's just a fence. That's it. Tens of thousands still in dark after targeted attacks on North Carolina power substations. There's nobody, there's nothing at the substations, y'all. Nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing at the substations to protect the substations. With no suspects of motive announced, the FBI is joining the investigation into power outages in a North Carolina county believed to have been caused by intentional and targeted attacks on substations that left around 40,000 customers in the dark Saturday night, prompting a curfew and emergency declaration. The mass outage in Moore County turned into a criminal investigation when responding utility crews found signs of potential vandalism of equipment at different sites including two substations that had been damaged by gunfire, according to the Moore County Sheriff's Office. The person or persons who did this knew exactly what they were doing. Moore County Sheriff Ronnie Fields said during the Sunday news conference, we don't have a clue why Moore County. <clears throat> why the power grid is an attractive target for attacks the sheriff would not say whether the criminal activity was domestic terrorism, but noted no group has stepped up to acknowledge or accept they're the ones who did it. North Carolina government Ray Roy Cooper called the incident a criminal attack. The Democrats said the state will make sure critical services have support. Right? I'll talk. Blah, 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 blah. As of Monday afternoon, about 38,000 homes and businesses remain without power, according to the Duke Energy spokesperson, Jeff Brooks. He said it could take until Thursday to restore power to everyone affected. Okay? Nobody's there. Nobody. Nobody's there. This is always there to protect your power. A raggedy fence. That's security on the ground. <laughs> That's security. That's security. That's security. That's why people is making stuff like this. Preppers, grid down survival guide. How long I've been telling y'all get y'all food and get ready. Get y'all food and get y'all candles and get y'all self ready. Because when they go down, ain't going to be a candle nowhere and the store going to be closed immediately. The store not going to open because the store is on the grid. The store not going to open. The store not going to be open. The store is on the grid. 
Is it done? What's the logic behind? The logic is this, g -Ra. Nobody's minding the store. That g -Ra, they got black Americans thinking that America's this great country, like the Wizard of Oz. It's this big, great, but it's not. It's not this big, great thing that you think it is. And there's vulnerabilities everywhere. They, they g -Ra, all your ideas about the police, the military, security, all come from movies. They show you movies where media coming and Will Smith or somebody go and they get on the spaceship and they go blow the media up and save the planet. Something happened. It's an invasion. They show helicopters just coming and they show that and they think you can fly down and they can save you. But when Katrina hit New Orleans, they didn't abandon New Orleans. The people in New Orleans was pissed because they thought that America could do like in the movies, but America couldn't fly down there and get them. They didn't just leave them down there. They couldn't come. They couldn't come. They can't just up and mobilize like they make you think. Why do you think these countries ain't going to world war? Because they are really weak. China's weak. Russia's weak. America's weak. They know they won't do nothing but destroy each other. Hardly nobody will win a war. They'll just pretty much wipe each other out pretty much. Russia can't even beat the Ukraine. That's all movies. So now when your child get killed, you mad because the police don't solve the murder because you watch a movie and he solved the murder in the movie, boy. Boy, in the movie, boy, he solved that murder like that. He get leads and all that and he bump into suspects and all of that in the movie. But in real life, if I put a mask on and I shoot your son, and they don't get no license plates. There ain't no fingerprint or none. Your son just dead. How they going to find me? Don't nobody know. If I didn't tell nobody I did it, your son just dead. How they going to find me? They got to get lucky and catch me on the camera somewhere with some license plate. But if I stole the car, and they can't catch me for stealing the car, and they run a license place, and it's a stolen vehicle, it's a dead end. If I go jack somebody for they come, come shoot you up, you just dead, man. It's a wrap. All they gonna get is a mask, okay? This Chicago, this the rack. What do we say in the rack? No face, no case. You don't see my face, you don't got no fingerprints, you just dead. End of story. The only way they can catch me is if I use my car. But if I jack somebody for their vehicle, come knock you off, uh, take the vehicle, set it on fire, there's no DNA, and I just whistle while I work. <laughs> and you're just dead, professional hit. And I just go home. And you just cry and have a funeral, but you shouldn't have been playing with me on social media. That's on you. You don't know who you're playing with. So listen, stop watching these TV. It ain't like that. There ain't no superhero going to save you out here, man. Why you think I'm telling y'all protect y'all self? You have to protect yourself, man. It's all movies. The movies make you think they can do all this stuff that they can't. They can't do that like that. That's the movies. We get our ideas of the, the, of the planet from the movies. We think they can do what you see in the movies. They can't do what you see in the movies. If you don't defend yourself, you out of there. You know what I'm saying? You got to defend yourself out here. It's doggy dog. 
And they finna they finna shut everybody down. Like they finna shut listen, people of, of America. They finna shut y'all down. They finna punk y'all. Now, like I've been saying, like B. Dolo said, I believe America's a place that's gonna fight back. But fight back from what? From being punk. They're going to punk you first. You probably going to fight back. I believe America's going to fight back. But I think only after everything happened, America's be like, oh, oh what's going on? But they're going to they gonna make their move first before you resist. I don't believe you're going to resist. Why are they making your move? Because they already got you sleep already. You already sleep. Look at your president. That's your president. Look at dude. Anybody with any sense could look at him and see there's somebody else running the country. Dude don't even know what day it is, so who's really running the country? Anybody knows that Biden and Trump didn't run nothing. Trump, look at Trump. Trump didn't run anything, and neither does Biden. Anybody could see that. Those are two idiots. They got people in the country fighting over Trump or Biden. My boy, Uncle Mike, he loved Trump. He think Trump is a savior. I'm like, dude, Trump is a bum loser, dude. You tripping. He really believed Trump is a savior. I'm like, dude, Trump and Biden, both of them, they can't do nothing. They got all type of stuff on them. Both of them been accused of messing with, with, with minors. What are you talking about? Some people believe Trump gonna set shut down pedophiles when Trump got all kind of accusations of going to teenage beauty pageants and you know doing scrup you know scrupulous behavior at teenage beauty pageants at his hotel. He's the teen beauty pageant dude, and he's gonna shut down pedophilia. Okay. Don't nobody know who's mine in the store. It's a secret hand running every day. And they already, you know, they already, they already, they punked everybody already. You already been punked. So don't try to act tough now. You know, they used the pandemic. They punked the whole world. Everybody bow down. That's that's all they needed to see. Every they punked everybody. Yep, allegedly, supposedly, uh, with Trump, allegedly. But they punked everybody already. Everybody bent. Everybody. Straight up. People start using cold words, jab, and everything. You couldn't even talk. They made you change the way you talk. Nobody's people were scared to say vaccination. They punked everybody. So then when they punk everybody, then the leadership got a punk because you ain't got nobody to back you up. So they end up punking all those contract creators because we ain't had no backup. So what can we do? You can't do nothing without an army. So it was like, Phil, if you keep talking, we're going to shut your whole channel down. I had to move all my stuff to Patreon. I wasn't going to have no backup. I was just going to be out of here. That's it. We ain't, we ain't on nothing like that. It ain't no situation where they'll say somebody black get on here talking some real stuff and they, and they shut down their account. Black folks won't stop tweeting and Instagramming and Facebooking and YouTube, they're going to go right on there even though you kicked out. Now, if everybody logged off, we would have some power, but everybody not going to log off. If they kick me off, ain't nobody going to ride for me, but a few people, everybody else going to still be on here. Like nothing happened. They're going to be like, man, they kicked Pharaoh off. It's going to be a whole bunch of videos about them kicking me off. We ain't really down like that. When they punk Kaepernick, a black man still was watching football. He didn't stop watching his team. He didn't. 